work when he rolls up to the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I blocked out a little bit of time here, uh, so that we could, uh, discuss the Royal Rumble, uh, the matches, the show, whatever. Uh, Mike and Ronnie were on the, uh, the Monday Mayhem Warriors last night. Riz, you were not here, so I, I will open Monday. things up for you just to kind of like, just, just share some of your thoughts about, uh, what, what we all saw on Sunday. I didn't look at the spoilers. I went when, went in this raw like any good human wrestling fan should. Mm-hmm. I, I was confused when I saw Edge come out first. Mm-hmm. Because that was supposed to be Randy Orton, not Edge. Yeah. It, and Edge was supposed to come out second, but it was switched. Got confused there. Got confused a lot. But that was really fucking good. The men's rumble. Like, the men's rumble, but like both, both men's and women's. Uh, and also, uh, fuck Sam Roberts. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, but men, the men's got it right. The women's got it right. Like I don't think there was one really, really bad match on that entire card. There were some iffy spots, but it was in like like I said at the beginning, it was very enjoyable. It was a very enjoyable way to end an enjoyable weekend in wrestling, as it should be for a top four pay per view on something that's probably not going to be around in a month. Rest in peace, WWE Network. Peacock era begins in a couple months. Um, Four ninety nine. That's it's going to be great, or nothing if you. Or nothing. Yes. Um, are we going to get? New, are we going to get a new dubstep song that says four ninety nine? I mean, why not? I mean, if they yeah. is there any like is is there deep rooted nostalgia for like twenty fourteen WWE Network that would uh that would that would pique people's be, interest for that? I mean, more, more than likely it will be dubbed to uh the office theme of anything <laughs> 499 everybody by the network <laughs> um do you guys have a favorite moment that you want to single out from sunday there's a lot um i thought both rumble matches were very very good agreed. i thought really did um, uh, I saw some people all... trying to take shots at the women's. I thought both of them were really good. Take shots at the women's rumble. Like, I thought that was that women's rumble rivals ninety two for me. Like the only thing, the only thing that's bad, and I haven't watched it back with this feature, Jerry Lawler on commentary. Yeah, no, we don't need it. We never have. We never will. Fuck off, me. but. <laughs> Other than that, um, the Women's Rumble is how a perfect Rumble is booked. You have a long-lasting feud that goes for about half the match. You have a big return in early in the early part of the match, and you have several big returns sp- sprinkled throughout. You have uh, the underdog story of Bianca Belair. You have... The storytelling aspect of as the Billy turns, <laughs> you have everything going on with it, and it was just a really, really, really well thought out rumble. The, yeah, the well final, thought out is a good description of it. That sure. final three, that final three moment where they both eliminated, uh, where where Rhea and Bianca eliminated Charlotte. Charlotte's reaction to that happening, to everything beyond that point, it's Jeff's kiss. Perfect. Like, just that moment of, okay, I'm not going to attack you if you don't attack me. I'm going to just roll into the ring with you, and then we can start. Like, that, that point was, like, well thought out. That's like, and it's like the kind of moment that, like, part of the, part of how we feel about 
you know, that this women's rumble is going to be, is going to be determined by what happens over the next, you know, year, years to come. If this is like, if like Bianca and Rhea do what a lot of people think they can do going forward, then this moment, you know, where they're the last two in this rumble and that moment when they're sitting on the apron and they kind of agree to just kind of <laughs> scoop back into the ring, like that, that elevates it even higher. And then it becomes, you know, legendary status because then that becomes almost like the beginning of like another wave of uh, women's wrestling in I mean, WWE. They're also, they're already equating it to that point where Charlotte went to NXT last year and Rhea and Bianca were the ones that were like, you don't go here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and now, and now it looks like they both go where Charlotte goes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, Tina saying the camera missing the Bianca Bailey elimination was unfortunate. Yeah. Missing Bailey's elimination was very unfortunate. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think that's something that can be fixed in post though. Like when you watch it back, cause it's like the, it's like the camera missing edges for a spear from last year. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like if you're only going to get one person's elimination from like the first half of that rumble, like Bailey's the one you had to get. Like yeah. hers was the most, you know, she was the, you know, the most high, at least in my opinion, she was like the highest profile um, person in that match for like oh, yeah. the first half of it. You know, her and Bianca basically. Um, and how, I mean, how awesome, like Naomi, like went on like a monster run through that match too. That was mm-hmm. incredible. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Bobby is telling us in the chat room that his favorite part of the Women's Rumble, this is going to shock you guys, was when Wait, Billy was... Kay did Uh-oh. the iconic pose and immediately turned to see uh, Ruby Riot and totally played it off. She is a comic genius. Her timing is impeccable. Mm-hmm. Billy Kay's performance in that Rumble is was spectacular. Billy, Just like Billy everything, oh my her God. timing... Her just expressions, the nonverbals, like the little things she's doing in the ring are so perfectly on point. Mm-hmm. Billy told stories with Peyton, Ruby, Liv, and Jillian Hall of all people. <laughs> she got Jillian all, over. All yeah. at the same time. And it all made sense. It all made sense. And it was wild. Absolutely, and plus, she was even on commentary for the first part of that match because she was trying to find someone to partner up with. <laughs> and then we got the Billy Jilly connection, which honestly is amazing. Mm-hmm. I-, I said it last night. I'll say it again. She's a national treasure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, Tina saying that the um, the athleticism shown by Naomi and Bianca to avoid the elimination uh, in the one spot. Now, this is going to be this is going to get controversial. Uh, for Bianca, because I saw, you know, some folks are sharing screen grabs of Bianca's both feet, maybe like a full a full foot and maybe a toe touching the floor when she and Naomi were just barely hanging on. Um, I, to them, I, I I will go to historical precedence, but first, go ahead, Rose. Both feet must touch the ground. That's right. Not, not the toe. In a toe. It's not football. It's oh. both feet. I want to see the, the 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 elimination avoidance that is like if, not a full foot on the ground. You can't eliminate me. My my full foot is not on the ground. Well, I mean, well, Naomi was on her back. Naomi was on her it, back. It's a little bit back. absurd sometimes, but yeah. Uh, we're going back to that uh, Kofi Kingston last year. I believe he hopped on one foot over to the ring, to put his foot up on the ring step. I could be wrong. Yeah, I know there was a moment where that happened. Sounds right. Um, so, yeah, I forget what I was going to say, but I'll talk about something else. Oh, the toe Brad, is part of the foot. You are eliminated, says Brad. Okay. Brad, you're well, listening to Brad. the chat room. Um, Brad, Brad, I, I, Bradley said he hated Billy Kay. So, yeah. like, well, what's wrong with Brad? It doesn't it doesn't matter. He Anyways, just, he just doesn't enjoy <laughs> um fun or joy or laughter. That's fine. Or butts. <laughs> so, just as a tangent, as we're talking about the the elimination avoidance and just how absurd it, for me, it gets a little bit too absurd. Like if you're on your back on the floor, you're that's you're done. Right. That's you're done. So mm-hmm. anyway, I don't know if this is a shot or just something cute to do. But um, over the weekend, New Japan ran a show, uh, and they do these ten um, man elimination 
style tag team matches sometimes during these uh you know lesser road two shows um and one of the rule the rules are like you can get eliminated by getting tossed over the top rope to the floor you can get pinned or other things it's kind of like aztec warfare um except you can't get eliminated actually there's nothing like aztec warfare forget that just strike that from the record anyway um let's get to the main point uh during the match um, I believe it was El Phantasmo gets thrown over the top rope and he does a very similar thing where he kind of keeps his heels on the apron, but his back is on the floor and the referee just walks over to him. And he's just like, you're done. And he's like, my feet are on the, my feet aren't on the floor. And he's just like, I mean, it's in Japanese, so I don't understand what the referee's saying, but I assume it was something like, don't be ridiculous. You're on your back. You're eliminated. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> so, um, that's a kind of a, <laughs> I'd like to see them get back to that, but like, you know that's a genie that's so far out of the bottle for WWE, and it's part of the fun of the Rumble is is that goofy stuff. So I, is, I, that, I can't, is that going too hard on him? Go ahead, sorry. Has Zach Gallon been in the Rumble? Uh, I don't yeah, believe so. I think we never talked about that. I'm pretty sure he has been in the Rumble. So, so using the rules that we saw last Sunday. Zach Gowan has never been eliminated from the Rumble. Just saying. Um, our, our chat room moderator says Zach Gowan has not been in a Rumble. Okay. Because but, if he was, you were not going to beat him. Hey, to be right. fair, you can go to the back, you can grab his prosthetic leg, and you can throw it over the top rope. You know, Kurt I mean, Henning was never eliminated either, so. Also very true. Curtis Axel. Mm-hmm. Curtis Axel. Yeah. And Horns. Yeah. Guys. yeah. It goes back to Orton, too. Like, Orton gets credit for being in the Rumble match for however long, like, over an hour. Like, the same but as that. But he end. wasn't in But the he, match. like, took a siesta for 45 minutes in the back. Um, and then you're like, can you really do that? Like, we've seen that before, too. Like, we saw them um, do that with Austin and McMahon. They they, they, they just, like, chill. We saw that with Roman. Yeah, we did see that. That did not work, by the way. Um well, it yeah. never. It, the only time it worked is when you happen to have the rock in your back pocket. That's mm-hmm. the only time it works. I mean, it doesn't hurt when you're as over as Austin was. No one really cared that he just like skipped out. Plus, I think he took a hellacious beating in the women's room, uh, <laughs> and that's how they got rid of him for a while. Anyway, yeah, um, that was a fun one. And uh, one thing we didn't mention is the magic. Well, the matches that were. Not the Rumble. <laughs> you mean Stadium Stampede Part Two? Yeah. <laughs> a spiritual like, successor, definitely. Like we were watching it, like on a delay. So it was Sorg, and then Mike, and then Matt, and then me, and then it just happened like a crescendo of oh like this is like (laughs) that one note of what the fuck just happened and then all of a sudden you just see fucking roman reigns just one-handed like just putting it one hand on the wheel and just running over kevin owens (laughs) it was great it was like it was the uh, golf cart out of nowhere you just (laughs) did not even see it coming (laughs) And then the minute detail of having the, I, I don't know if it was planned or not, but the minute detail of having uh, the Mrs. Money in the Bank briefcase just right there left on the table there. Yeah. I, you were, you're definitely not the only one who noticed it. Oh, no. Yeah, I, think I, I, I pointed it out on Sunday. Do you guys there? Yeah. And I, I think I, I was thinking about it before. I was like, Wait, he can challenge any title, any world title. And then I saw the briefcase there. I'm like, we were thinking the same thing. But it was it, like, just that little small detail of just leaving that there. It, 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 it helped a lot to drive home the fact that, hey, this might still happen here. It, it and Miz still having that briefcase, we can get a whole number of things before WrestleMania. Oh yeah, especially with with there being an elimination chamber on the horizon. 
Who the hell knows what Mania is going to look like at this point? Miz might win the title there. Absolutely. At the cham- Absolutely. In the chamber. Absolutely. Lose at Mania. Win it back at Mania. For Drew? I don't know. I mean, I guess Who they knows? could do that. Uh, I, I, I... Maybe not Drew. I don't know. I don't know if Miz is the right opponent for Drew. I, I don't know who the right opponent is for Drew right now, but he's out there somewhere, hopefully. Oh, it's, it's probably Keith some Lee. lobster head. It, it, it's Keith Lee. I mean, I, I don't think Sheamus is the right guy for Mania Keith for Lee. Drew either. Or maybe Keith. Keith Lee. You think they can get Damian Priest heated up fast enough Keith to Lee. challenge Drew? Lee. Keith Lee? Yeah, honestly, if it was WrestleMania and Keith Lee, Big E, and Bianca all won championships, oh my God. I, I'd be okay with it. <laughs> I'd be more than okay with it. Since they are doing um, two nights again this year, I would really like to see them do a um, a women's main event for at least one of those yeah. nights. Because mm-hmm. I mean, if it I, if it is Bianca versus Sasha, that is that is a legit so show closing caliber I, match. I think we may also see. A women's cinematic match. Well, I, yeah, I can, uh, they've got the person in place for that. Like one. Alexa and Oscar. Oscar. I was oh, thinking yeah. more. Just make it a horror show. I was Just thinking make it like a carnival of horrors. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. Have, yeah. have a zombie pirate Kyrie Sane. Bring her out. Like we can do. We can do anything. Mm-hmm. And that way we can get Kyrie Sane on the pot. Oh, have the match on the pirate ship. Well, it's gonna be have the match on the fucking pirate ship. Call it Alexa's barrage of boathouse. Alexa's boathouse of fun or something like. <laughs> oh God, we have to do it. Like, just have a mat, have a cinematic match on that pirate ship. People are talking about the Miz in the chat room here. What do they Alex, say about Alex what Cars do they say is saying about the Miz. They have a higher opinion of the Miz right now than I do. I, I, it's not that I don't like the Miz. I just don't think it's not right. I mean, everything feels really lukewarm right now. Uh, Alex says Mid- Edge versus Miz for the title at Mania, calling it now. Yeah. Imagine yeah. Miz pulling that at the Elimination Chamber and Edge being like, How dare you steal my shtick? <laughs> um, and Alex Miller is saying, I bet anybody 100 bucks Miz cashes in at Mania. But- <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's what, that's what, I'm, I'm, I'm actually with him on that. Oh, Bobby, Bobby has a perfect <clears> name. Like, do you really want to take that that moment? Doesn't that undercut yes. kind of like Seth's moment too? Like, no, really that would be the best that? way. Edge has this whole he's back after all these years of not being here. He's finally WWE champion. The Miz cashes in to win it. Ultimate heel move. And plus, <clears> heel move. Miz I mean, Edge losing after the money in the bank is a little bit poetic, but that's happened in his career before too this this is perfect like it's it's written in the goddamn stars wait has edge <laughs> lost to a cash in before yes he um yeah. he yeah. um he, he found a way to beat batista and um he found a way to beat batista to get the title um they were they were in the middle of like the the draft or the switching of the like, bottom line is cm punk cashed in on him and that's how punk won the oh, title oh, that's right. okay. i was gonna say it wasn't del rio because del rio Cashed in when, when someone told him to cash in. Yeah. 